Today's workout is something a little bit different. This is a single leg leg workout. So every single exercise we're going to be doing is unilateral or single leg. I know what you're thinking. Stern, you can't squat heavy single leg. You can't do heavy exercises. You can't make any gains. Well, that's not entirely correct. Single leg exercises are known for helping to gain strength because a lot of times we have a dominant side and a non-dominant side. And the dominant side tends to work a lot harder when we start to fatigue. So the idea here is to increase the strength on both sides so you're going to be stronger in your squats and your deadlifts if you do those exercises. The other benefit to single leg exercises is that it improves our balance. So you're balancing on one leg. You really have to focus. Of course, over time, perfect practice makes perfect. So your balance is going to be improved, which means less chance for injury. Also, when you're training one leg at a time, you're able to strengthen both legs evenly. This means that if you have a right quad that's a little bit bigger than the left quad, over the next few months, those two legs are going to become balanced and even from right to left, which can also help with injury prevention. So without further ado, let's get in there and train. First exercise is a Bulgarian split squat jump. You're gonna start with your non-dominant leg, three sets of three on each side. I've got a track and field background, so don't worry about the height, don't worry about cycling that leg over. Simply worry about taking that lead leg and exploding upward and landing nice and flat-footed, keeping your balance. This is gonna fire up your central nervous system, get the muscles working together, and help you handle this single leg workout. First weighted exercise is a Bulgarian split squat. Here, think about holding that dumbbell in the hand of the lead leg or the leg that's working. And I also want you to think about barely putting any pressure on that rear leg. So this is almost a single leg squat. If you want to recruit your glutes even more, lean forward at the torso. So always keep your back flat, but you can lean forward with your upper body. This is gonna further recruit the glutes. Also a wider stance is gonna help you hit those glutes. Weight through your heels versus weight through your toes. If you wanna go ahead and hit those quads a little bit more, you can push the weight through the toes and through the ball of the foot. But here, focus is a little bit more on those glutes. So go ahead and push the weight through the heels. I'm going to do three sets of eight reps per leg, and you'll find that your heart rate's going to get up <laughs> even after the first set. Start with that non-dominant side too. So make sure you're doing the exercise evenly from left to right. Good. Next exercise is a modified pistol squat. So we're going to use the bench here. This exercise is killer for hitting those quads. It's also gonna hit those hamstrings, it's gonna hit the glutes. It's amazing for working on the stability. One thing to really pay attention to here is as you're coming down, really focus on keeping that knee following the toe. Do not let the knee come in. And I'm gonna show you a variation as we get towards the end. If you start to get tired, if you can't quite do it with the leg extended, feel free to bend at the knee and drop the lower leg down. This is going to kind of um, shorten that lever and make things a little bit easier for you. And then if it's hard, just like that, go ahead and do a B stance. So you're going to almost do a kickstand stance and then you can work up to bending the leg and you can work up to straightening the leg completely. That straight leg is going to give you this isometric hold on that quad and it is going to burn and make them pop. So this exercise is deceptively hard. Three sets of eight reps or as many reps as you can do on that non-dominant side. And you can see as you get towards the end, you start to fatigue. As soon as that quality deteriorates, just finish up your set, take a break, and start over. Next, we're doing single leg RDLs. Now I've got the dumbbell, I'm holding it parallel to the ground. This is gonna help a little bit more with balance and stability. As you perform this exercise, be really careful that your back stays flat and that your hips stay parallel to the ground. 
there's a tendency to allow that leg that's swinging, the pendulum leg, to sort of the, the hip to come up. And you don't want that hip to come up because it's, it stops hitting those hamstrings and stops hitting those glutes. Knee is slightly bent. I like to think about weight evenly distributed throughout the foot. And think about your body as being on one plane. So as you lower your upper body, your back leg is going to follow suit. So it's just a plank position. And again, you're gonna start on that dominant side or the non-dominant side and let that dictate the number of reps you're able to do on that dominant side. We're shooting for three sets of eight. Everything here is going to be straight sets. We're not supersetting anything and uh, single leg workouts require quite a bit, a lot of focus, concentration, and you wanna stay as fresh as possible so you can perform every exercise nice and slow and perfectly from left to right. Perfect practice makes perfect. You want symmetry, this is the way to do it. Let's hit some glutes. This is a single leg hip thrust. Now on the non-working leg, make sure you're not hitching it upwards as you come up. There's a tendency, especially as you get tired, to use that non-working leg to propel you upwards. And we do not want that. And the goal here is to really control that negative. And once you get to the top of the exercise or, or mid rep, I want you to really squeeze and work on that mind muscle connection. Single leg exercises are fantastic for really isolating, working on exactly what you want to work on and evening out things because you'll have one side that tends to activate a little bit differently than the other side. And, uh, for me, it's my left side. So I have to be really, really careful. I always start on the left side, see how that's feeling. And what you can do is if you have a lazier glute, start on the weaker side, do your reps on the dominant side, and then come back and do a few more reps on that weaker side. A lot of times going back and forth like that will help you activate the glutes. Everything nice and slow controlled, keep that chin tucked, keep the back flat, tuck the pelvis forward just a bit. Weight should be through the heels. Shins should be perpendicular to the ground at the top of the movement. That's kind of how you know you're in that right position. We're gonna finish with some seated calves. All you need is a stable plate. So here I've got a plate that doesn't wobble and my dumbbell. And we're gonna do one leg at a time, of course. <laughs> and. I want you to push down on that dumbbell and really squeeze at the top. And with this exercise, rather than thinking about lifting your heel up, I want you to think about pushing your heel forward. And pushing the heel to the forward is going to really recruit those calves. It's gonna give you an awesome contraction. And I think it's gonna help you see progress if you haven't been seeing progress before. So three sets of eight to 10 reps here. Make sure that lower leg is perpendicular to the ground. Make sure you're pushing down on that dumbbell to give yourself a little bit extra resistance. This is a fantastic workout. You can do this anywhere as long as you have basic equipment, which a lot of people have this just at their house. So everything straight sets take about 45 seconds in between each set and you know, get a good recovery so you can perform and execute each exercise with perfection, actually each rep with perfection. With each of these exercises, make sure you're performing them properly before you add any weights. Tempo is going to be important, and then also executing the same exact way from right to left is going to improve your balance. Notice if your hips start shearing, notice if the angles are a little bit different. Perfect practice makes perfect. If you like this video, please subscribe and join the Fit Fam. And don't forget to click that little bell. You'll be the first to know whenever a new video comes out. And if you try this workout and you absolutely love it, please tag me on social media. I really enjoy seeing your progress and really enjoy seeing you take these workouts and make them your own. 
Thanks for watching. Until next time, train hard, y'all.